This is a GameCube. I grew up playing the GameCube, but in college I sold my GameCube so I could buy weed. I am now regretting that decision because the GameCube is awesome. And apparently other people think it's awesome because the prices for GameCube things are extremely high. And I'm extremely broke. So in this video, I want to see how cheaply I can recreate a GameCube using any means necessary so I can hopefully regain a piece of my childhood without becoming even more broke. So right away I realized that a Wii is going to be a little bit cheaper than a GameCube and it can play both Wii games and GameCube games. A Wii with all of its cords and a controller sells for around $70 online, but even better than that, a Wii with a broken disk drive sells for around $18 online. But for some reason, people who sell broken Wiis don't include the cords or the controller. So I picked up the cords from Amazon and I honestly don't remember how I got this remote. I think it just appeared. So now that I had a Wii, it was time to test out my $34 investment. Everything looked good when I plugged it in and it even had some games installed on it, which confirmed this Wii was functional aside from the faulty disk drive. Next, I cleared the entire system memory because I wanted to start fresh. See, my plan was to give this Wii a new lease on life by homebrewing it, which is a gentler way of saying jailbreaking it, which would allow me to download pretty much whatever the heck I wanted and hopefully regain my childhood back in the process. This Wii was essentially brand new and this was Christmas 2010. In order to homebrew the Wii, I needed to buy another component. This is a 64 gigabyte SD card that I picked up for $10 at Walmart. I made sure that it was formatted to FAT32. Next, I went online and found this Wii Hacks guide. It seemed legitimate enough, so I decided to trust it. The guide led me to this piece of software called ModMe, and I wish they would have chose a different theme for their website. The dark theme with the red text made me feel like I was on the dark web, and Google also agreed that the software might be sketchy. I went ahead and downloaded it anyway. I'll leave a link to the guide down below in case you want to check it out for educational purposes, which proceed at your own risk. ModMe is basically just a setup wizard and it generates you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to homebrew your Wii, which is pretty nice because there's quite a few steps involved with this. I'm definitely not going to go over the full tutorial because that would take way too long and ModMe does that for you, but I'll show you this is what running the exploit looks like on the Wii. I guess when you think of what hacking looks like in movies. You think of someone typing really fast and they're kind of like sweating, but this is what hacking looks like in real life. You're just using a Wiimote to click on a folder that has a bomber icon on it. We're in the system. Access granted. The next steps were pretty boring. Basically just using this GameCube controller to download things and then creating a backup so if the Wii eventually does get bricked, it can be restored to its default settings. This part was kind of cool. You can see it going through each individual block of memory, I think. Blocks doing things. That was my favorite part when the blocks did the things. I like shapes. The last thing I did was download a few apps onto this thing. There are some pretty cool apps you can get. I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check these out for yourself. So at this point, my objective to homebrew the Wii was completed. The entire process took me probably an hour and I could now finally play Mario Kart. And I didn't spend a ridiculous amount of money. But my original goal was not to acquire Mario Kart. My goal was to get my childhood back. And that meant more than just getting Mario Kart on a Wii. At this point, I was $56 invested into the total setup if you included the cost of a used GameCube controller, but there is still one thing missing. When it comes to nostalgia, the physical build of the Wii just does not compare to the GameCube. Something about the cube. The cube is more satisfying than the rectangular prism. This is facts. This is science. No one is debating this. I decided it was now time to give this Wii a complete redesign and I busted out my overly equipped drill bit set that I actually paid like $60 for just for this project, but we don't talk about that. That doesn't get included in the cost. The drill bit set was actually extremely useful just because there are quite a few security screws in the Wii and also like probably close to 30 screws total. This part was pretty tedious. The main idea is if you see a screw 
unscrew it. There are also screws hidden under stickers and the padded feet. Once I got the exterior shell off, it was a lot easier to get at the screws. I basically took as much stuff apart as I could, including the disk drive, until I was left with nothing but the motherboard, which is kind of cool to look at, I think. I made sure not to damage these components because the Wii won't run without them. Bluetooth chip, Wi-Fi chip, and the fan. And here's a look at all the different screws that had to be taken off. I put all the other components inside of a box just to stay organized. Maybe I could resell that on eBay, who knows. Now that the motherboard was free, I could now put it inside a 3D printed case. I had spent the last two weeks designing these, so I'll leave a link in the description where you can go and download them. There's actually qu quite a few parts that go into each case, like this bracket that secures the heatsink and the fan in place. For this teal case, I wanted to make it as slim as I could because it doesn't have a disk drive, so I think it turned out nice. It kind of looks slim and still kind of retro and all the buttons work and you get access to the SD card on the side which is cool. I definitely like the Wii Cube more than the minimalist case just because it's more classic and also it does have room in case you wanted to keep the disk drive so it could still technically function as a Wii as well. I tried to make this case as solid as I possibly could. Everything kind of slots into place and you can 3D print the different parts separately to do different colors so you don't have to have a multicolor 3D printer to print it. So at last my journey to reclaim my childhood was complete. The total cost for the Wii Cube came out to $60 whereas the GameCube with one game is $160. I'm now realizing maybe I should have put a different faceplate on the Wii Cube. It might look a little bit more classic. But maybe I'll have to save that for Wii Cube 2.0. I'm trying to think of what upgrades I could add to this thing. Probably some sort of LEDs. I know the Xbox 360 used a capacitive touch sensor for the power button. That might be a cool thing to add. If you have any more ideas, let me know in the comments. What are your thoughts on this type of project? And do you want to see more videos like this? Let me know.